Right, let's start. Today I'm going to talk about two things, if I've got time. Poisson, distribution, poison. Okay. It means fish in French. Uh, and also the chi-squared. Uh, both the test and the distribution itself. This is a change from the advertised program because I've reshuffled things around um, basically to put more of the theory towards the end of the course and more of the practical stuff towards the beginning. And if I haven't got time for the theory, well, we'll, uh, we'll truncate that. Poisson distribution. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves what the binomial was. Binomial distribution. You've got n trials independent yes and no success or failure left or right male or female dichotomous random variable uh, and the probability that we've got r successes equals n choose r p to the r 1 minus p n minus r which we've covered lots and lots of times okay and this is a classical distribution it's um it's been known ever since the uh, science of probability started. What I'm going to consider it now is what happens in a particular case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make n get larger in a particular way. Last time we covered n, uh, n getting large, n getting larger, last time, n getting larger, P fixed. And what we showed was, I didn't show it, but I asserted it, and it seems to be right, and I could prove it if this was a, a more theoretical course, that um, the limit, and I'm going to put that in scare quotes because I'm not defining formal limits at this point, the limit as n approaches infinity, the distribution distribution of R, number of successes, is normal or Gaussian with mean NP and standard deviation root NPQ. N's getting larger and P is fixed, so P is 0 0.6 or 0 0.5, a, a, a known constant fixed value. And it looks like this. Whoop. Well, this is the number of successes. And this is one of a large number of limit theorems that one gets in statistics. And quite often, the limit that you get in the limit of large n, or as n approaches infinity, is a Gaussian of one type or another. And we've, we've talked about that, and we've, we've plotted it, and we've shown it's true. And I could prove it if I had more theory at my disposal in the course. OK, so that's great. What I'm going to do now is think about the two parameters, n and p, and I'm going to consider a sequence which n gets bigger And simultaneously, P gets smaller. So NP in such a way so that NP stays fixed. Okay? So last time we looked at n getting larger, 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 and p staying at 0.3 or 0.1 or whatever it was. And now I'm going to vary both of these parameters, number of trials and the, and the probability of success, in such a way that the product np stays fixed. So I'll give you an example, e.g. n and p, I'm just going to make a little table here. 10, 0.4, 100, 0.04, 1,000, 0.004, and so on. 
So we can see that as we go down this process here, n and p getting larger and larger and p getting smaller and smaller, np, uh, sorry, np, which is of course the mean, stays fixed. And of course I could have a million here, so long as it's point naught, 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 four, um, the mean will be fixed. What happens to the standard deviation? Well, that is running out of space. Let's talk about the variance instead. The variance, which is n p 1 minus p, OK? So let's just work that out. Here, it's the first one. This is just scratch space here. I'll work it out here, and then I'll just copy it across, which is 10 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 equals uh, Four times 0 0.6, which equals um, to, uh, to 2.4. So I can just write that, that in 2.4. What's the next one? 100 times 0 0.04. Now it's n p 1 minus p, so it's going to be 10 times 0 0.4 times 0. Point, oh sorry, 0 0.04, 0 0.96. You see, because it's n p 1 minus p. So we'll have a look at that. I need the I need the computer to do that exactly. 0.4, oops, times 0.96. I'll just make that a bit larger. Three point eight four. The next one is 100 times 0 0.04 times 0 0.9. Sorry. The next one is 1,000 times 0 0.004 times 0 0.996. OK? Let's have a look at that. Sorry, I'm getting myself tangled up here. Yeah, that's correct. That's, co that, that's correct, isn't it? That's correct. You see, all I've done is I've changed one but not the other. You'll see why I made that mistake in a minute. So let's take it up to 1,000. You see, to change it, I'm just putting that to 1,000, that to 0 0.004, and that to 0.996. That's what I meant to say. You'll see why I made that mistake in a minute. 3.984. It's pretty obvious what's going on here. What's going on here is that this value here is getting closer and closer and closer to 1,000 times 0 0.04, or to, to, to NP. It's getting closer and closer and closer because the formula says that the variance is NP 1 minus P. And this bit here is fixed because I'm making it stay at 4. So the variance, which is NP 1 minus P, is NP, which is 4, times 1 minus P. And of course, this thing here is getting closer and closer and closer to 1 because my p is getting smaller, 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 so 1 minus p is approximately equal to 1. Let's try it with a million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The mean is easy. It's 4, because you can see that I'm increasing and decreasing these in proportion. So let's work out the variance. Three zeros. Extra three zeros. Extra three nines, I guess. Three point nine 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 nine. Robin, did you mean variance or SD? This is variance at the moment, because I'm not taking the square root of it. So this is a variance, not a not a. Square. Okay. Three point nine nine nine. How many nines? Four nines eight four. Yes, I could do a billion. Yes, I could do a trillion. Yes, I could do a quadrillion. Yes, I could do billion, 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 billion. But now it's happening. B 
because the mean is staying fixed and the variance is getting closer, closer, closer to 4. And even, even here it's pretty close. Just because the mean and standard deviation or mean and variance are known doesn't mean that the distribution itself isn't changing. So we need something a little bit more sophisticated. This is a very sort of first brush approximation. What's the mean? What's the variance? But what's happening? Maybe, maybe the distribution's changing in detail, even though the mean and variance are staying the same. So let's have a look at that. Well, let's just have a look. If I go plot, table, or, oh, oops. Let's just start out with our binom. That's the first row, yeah? Do that again. That's the first that's the first row, 100 observations, size 10, probability 0.4. So you see sometimes you get a 1, sometimes a 9, but most of the time it's hovering around 4. So of course what I'm going to do is to make a table of these guys. There it is, and what I'm going to do is plot that table. Just before I carry on, I want you to observe carefully that I'm building up my commands from the inside out. I started with our binom and then table of that, there's the table, and then the same command, and then plot that. So start from the inside, our binom, then table of it, and then plot it. So I'm using more and more sophisticated ways to present the same data. And I'm actually going to do something a little bit cheeky here. I'm just going to whack up that uh, number of observations. Cheeky. So here's our, here's our table of random numbers, and I could have used D binom if I'd have really wanted to, but we'll see in a minute why this doesn't uh, work. OK, so it's got this distribution, this kind of hump distribution, with a mean of 4 and a standard deviation of 2, I guess. All right, now let's start this limiting process. I'll go up from 10 to 100, 0 0.04. And we get this distribution here. It's changed a little bit. Now, because I've got 100 trials, uh, it's gone off, 100 trials, probability 0.4. In principle, I've got probability out to 100. But if I give you a 0.04 chance of getting a trial right, and I say, right, do it 100 times, yes, it's possible to get, the, to get a success every time, but you ain't going to do it in the lifetime of the universe. Do that again, just to see what the uncertainty is. You see it shifts around a little bit because of random variability. But we've got more or less the same shape. So what I'm going to do now is just carry on this process. Put another zero there, put another zero there. The mean stays at four. Let's just see, uh, I, want to, I, want to keep, I want to keep both, both things visible and I'm struggling with the screen here. The mean is constant at 4, and the variance is constant at 4 as well. It's not exactly 4, look, it was 3.99 whatever, but it's pretty much 4. But we can see that we've got this characteristic, characteristic shape here. And of course I'm just going to carry on. Put another two zeros there, two zeros there. Do you see when I go from this line to this line, I'm multiplying the size by 100, I've got 100 times as many trials, but I'm punishing you on the other side, by, remove, by reducing your probability by 100 to keep this product n times p constant. Like keeping the mean constant. I'm keeping the mean constant indeed. I'm keeping the mean. Yeah, you keep the mean constant. Well, I am keeping the mean constant, and as it happens, almost I'm keeping the variance constant, except for this 99999 business. But what we're seeing as we go through this process, not much change. I could put another 10 zeros on here, and we get more or less the same picture. It's clear that this process, this procedure, going down here, 10, 100, 1,000, a million, a billion, a quillion, it's approaching something. It's getting closer to something, which is not, um, it's not obvious. It's not obvious that that's occurring. So... In the limit of large n and small p with np equals 
I'm going to say lambda fixed. Okay. We get a particular distribution for number of successes. This is not obvious. As I go down this process, even though the mean and variance are pretty much constant, it could have had all sorts of peculiar structure and it could have been getting weirder and weirder in who knows what way. There could be tiny bits of probability floating right out there or a big spike at zero. There could have been anything, but there isn't. There's this very, very, very well behaved shape. <coughs> this is known or the, distrib the particular distribution is known as the Poisson distribution. And a number of very, very, very famous statistics educators, one of whom I've met, a guy called Spiegelhalter, who's uh, the top big cheese of this, he says the Poisson distribution is my favorite distribution. Beautiful little distribution. And he means it too. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about it and then I'll show you some mathematics and how to use it and how to think about it. <coughs> 